We have one more day until December, one more day until I get my Santa hat and wear it way too much during the month of December, and maybe most importantly, five hours on the dot until Advent of Code opens up. Uh, so I want to talk about Advent of Code, and I want to hopefully guide some, give some insight into whether you should participate and kind of what it is. So Advent of Code is a challenge that goes on every year. Um, I don't know when it started, but it's been going on for as long as I can remember. Uh, it is a... That's kind of cute. Uh, the You can click on this and change the format. And Anyways, uh, it is a... Um, advent calendar like a, a christmas calendar that you would open and get chocolates from but instead of getting chocolates you get a coding problem um it's created by eric wastel 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 i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that uh it's yeah advent calendar small programming puzzles this is subjective <laughs> this is very subjective um, but one of the things I like about this is that it can be solved in any programming language that you like. Uh, some people use them for interview prep, company training, university coursework, practice problems, a speed contest, or to challenge each other. Um, you don't need a background to participate. Little programming knowledge and problem solving skills will get you pretty far, nor do you need a fancy computer. Every problem has a solution that completes in at most 15 seconds on 10 year old hardware. Um, I have done this a couple years now uh and i was looking for a specific piece uh this part i guess why was this puzzle so easy or hard the difficulty and subject matter varies throughout the event very generally the puzzles get more difficult over time this is very true um and with difficulty comes a time commitment that seems to increase so uh generally what happens for me is um, i have a full-time job i do some projects outside of work some are open source some are closed source i have a game uh, that i maintain um, a, a bunch of stuff so the point i'm getting at here is usually for me i start advent of code and then somewhere around day 10 to 12 uh, usually i start doing occasional advent of code challenges or i, or, or I just fall off the wagon completely um, some of these end up taking a while that being said I think you should try them. I think that, uh, you know, you might be pleasantly surprised at how well you push through these. And again, the first couple of challenges, the first five, first six, first seven, usually aren't very bad. Um, I wish I had an example to show you. Uh, oh, yeah, events. Okay, so it looks like they've been doing them since 2013. So this was last year's, or sorry, since 2015. Uh, this is last year's. So this is 2023. Uh, trebuchet. Something's wrong with global snow production, and you've been selected to take a look. The elves have even given you a map on it. Oh, sorry, a map. On it, they've used stars to mark the top 50 locations that are likely to be having problems. You've been doing long enough to know that to restore snow operations, you need to check all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving the puzzles. Okay, so this is more information about how this calendar worked. So you can see there are stars here at each uh, each step. Um, but uh, they discovered that their calibration document, your puzzle input, has been amended by a very young elf who was apparently just excited to show off her art skills. Consequentially, the elves are having trouble reading the values. Uh, so yeah, you'll get an example here. So it consists of lines of text. Each line originally contained a specific calibration value that the elves now need to recover. The calibration value can be found by combining the first digit and the last digit to form a single two-digit number. So for example, uh, in this example, the calibration values of these lines are 12. So one and two, 38, so three and eight. 15, 1, and 5, and then 77, because this value is both the first and the last. There's only one in this case. There are tons of little edge cases like this, uh, so just be aware of that when you're doing the, the challenges. Um, but then you add them together and produce a value. Uh, so the thing that's really neat about this is that you your prompt is the same as everyone else's, but your inputs are going to be different. So you can't just copy someone else's answer. And you technically don't have to solve these with programming. You probably should. Uh, but if you don't solve these with programming, um, you can see here, you just type an answer in. So in theory, you'll write a script, and I'll, I'll show you why right here, because uh, this is our input, and this would take a long time to run by hand. So you would get your input, 
you would write a script to take in that file or however you want to handle taking in the document. It truly doesn't matter, which is really nice. You could copy and paste the whole thing as hard, a hard coded string if you really want. Um, so you don't have to worry about file IO. Uh, and then you get your output and then you just paste it here. Um, and then that's it. If you complete it, did I not do last year's? Why am I, I could have swore I did last year's. Let me just take a look and see, I guess I did not. So, so yeah, so 2022, um, this was an example. My puzzle answer was this one. Your answer will not be this one, um, or it very likely won't be. Um, usually there's a part one and a part two. So you can see here. Uh, so we get a part one. Then again, this problem is different than the one I just walked over. Sorry, I swapped to a different year. Uh, but you can see here, like there's uh, calories and you have to deal with elf calories to make sure they have enough energy, I guess, to do their elfly duties. Um, and then there's part two. So then part two gives you your second star. So you get one star for completing part one and then um, another star for part two. Generally, part two involves refactoring the stuff that you just did to support a new use case or to change something. Uh, so it's entirely up to you. My advice would be don't slop together your first solution. Um, take time, build it right, build it in a way that's you know potentially extensible or can be changed. And most of the time, the part two ends up being a small change afterwards if you've done that if you slop together your first solution you might end up slopping together a second um that's fine too if you want to take that approach but yeah okay so uh what about anything else is this free uh it is free there's an advent of code plus plus um i don't know entirely what this involves uh this is a past event oh i'm sorry i'm still on the past event so let's go to 2024 and take a look so you get your name, a uh, supporter badge next to your name. Uh, you can switch to a different event on the events page. Uh, you can support via Stripe and PayPal. Um, he does tell you that amounts under $1 barely reach him after fees and don't constitute a badge. Please be patient. Uh, Coinbase seems to have dropped support for hosted pay what you want checkout, so it's currently unsupported. Um, you can see if you're a supporter, I might support it this year. Uh, they also have a shop. If you're like super into Advent of Code, you can get an advent of code shirt or mug whatever um that's you know <laughs> not not for me but i understand that it might be for someone uh you can change your settings here uh so you can change how your name's displayed link to your github um if you are joining a sponsor you can join here uh do not show this on stream this hover to reveal um that is a uh code that's specific to your account you can transfer your data um as well uh, you can view sponsors, um, so you can see. A nice thing about this, too, I guess, is if you're interested in people who are hiring, a lot of them who are sponsoring this have their careers page listed, so you can find opportunities there. Uh, Code Crafters is sponsoring it, sponsoring it, which is great. I am a big fan of Code Crafters. Um, Kotlin, Boot.dev, actually, like, a lot of really good sponsors this year, not just companies, but people in the programming education space or the software development education space. Uh, there's a leaderboard. Let's see if I can go. I'm going to go back to 2022 since that seems to be the last one I participated in. I guess I, oh, I did not do last year's uh, because I did Advent of Flutter instead. Um, so yes, so you can look at the leaderboard. Uh, you can see this uh, Beta Veros is, uh, was in first place last year. Um, you should be able to compare yourself as well. And um, hmm, maybe not. I thought there was a spot where you could see that. Um, and then there's stats for uh, who's completing what. So kind of similar to what I said, you start to see people falling off around the 10 to 12 mark. I mean, people are falling off the entire time, but um, a fair amount of them are falling off around the 10 to 12 mark. Uh, okay, so I've talked a lot about that, leaderboards, all that fun stuff. Should you do Advent of Code? Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's really great. Uh, it's a, a fun opportunity to work on some very abstract programming challenges um, to build new programming skills. I often try to do a new language. So I think in 2022, I did Rust. Um, I think it was Rust. I think uh, in 2024, I don't know, we'll see. I need to decide because it starts in less than five hours, but I might do um, something like Zig or maybe just stick with TypeScript and just see how far I can actually get this year. 
Um, if you want to finish, my suggestion would be stick with a language that you're very comfortable with. Uh, if you want an opportunity to learn a new language and play with something fun, pick a new language. Um, there's no commitment here. You don't have to finish it. You don't pay anything, so you won't be missing out if you don't finish it. And you can always take your time and come back and do these after December as well. So like I could go back to the 2023 event and do the 2023 event. Um, so yes, I, I think you should do these. Uh, the caveat would be if you have something else you want to do instead. So um, I mentioned Advent of Flutter. That was my own project. There's no Advent calendar. I just did a new Flutter video every day where we added functionality to an app. So we started an app from scratch and we added new functionality every single day uh, up until Christmas. And then we had a working app by the end of it, uh, which was really great. And that playlist, um, I will put that playlist somewhere if you want to watch any of that stuff. Uh, if you don't know Flutter, you can type what I type, and at the end of it, you'll have a working app that you can show off, which is pretty cool. Um, another option is Advent of Svelte. Uh, I really like Svelte. If you are new to my channel, you might not know that, but if you have been here a while, you probably do. This is the same idea, um, except it's specific to Svelte, and they might not be doing it for 2024. That makes me sad. Uh... Huh. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Well, that's disappointing. Um, you can do the old 2023 challenges, though, if you'd like. Uh, so this is kind of the same thing, except you're using Svelte to solve these challenges. So uh, you can see here that elves are tirelessly created presents all year round. They're right on schedule, but they've run into a big problem. Ancient system for tracking has been naughty or nice. It's out of commission. With the hundreds of thousands of letters of children piled up alongside their records of good and bad deeds, the elves are in dire need of a modern solution. So you're building a naughty or nice tracker for these elves. Um, enabling them to input names and tally each child's deeds. Uh, so you can get that data here. Um, but yeah, it's pretty open-ended too. Uh, so that's another option if you wanted to do something like that. The spelt stuff is pretty cool. I'm kind of disappointed they're not doing it again this year, but I understand it takes time. Um, but yeah, there's other challenges like that too that you could look at. My suggestion again though would probably be Advent of Code. A ton of people seem to be doing this uh, year after year. And one of the nice things about it is if you build a solution, you can probably find someone else who has built a solution in the same language, either on Reddit or another content creator doing YouTube videos where they, they build their solution and show their solution. Um, so you have people to compare it to so you can see what you did and see how other people solve the same problem And that's a fantastic way to learn and grow Okay, I've talked a lot Evan of code starts soon. I hope to see you participating in it I will probably try to do videos for most of mine as well, um, and we'll see how long I stick with it this year Thanks. Have a great day